Okay, so today we continue with the geometry stuff. We start talking about line segments and stuff, but be before we do that, we're going to hit some factoring to make sure we truly understand how to do this. Start here. I've got x squared plus 6x plus 8. When I do this, again, I'm always trying to do this one. I'm trying to find the two numbers that multiply together to give me this number, the second number, the th I guess the third. And when I add up those same two numbers, they give me this number. So, okay, what two numbers multiply to give me 8 and also add up to give me 6? That would be 4 and 2. So when I factor it, there's my 4 and there's my 2. So it's x plus 4, x plus 2. If I FOIL this out, if I double distribute this out, it takes me back to there. So I come over here and I do this. That's okay. Again, I would practice on your own first, see if you can get them all by yourself. Okay, what two numbers multiply together to give me negative 60, and when I add them up, give me negative 11? So there's a few different numbers that multiply to give you 60 and negative 60, so which two multiply together to give you negative 60 and add up to give you negative 11? Negative 15 and 4. Negative 15 times 4 gives me negative 60. Negative 15 plus 4 gives me negative 11. All right, this one looks a little different. First things first, I see, okay, there's a number out in front of the x squared, but I do see that that number goes into all of these numbers also. So I can factor out the three. I pull it out front. Notice if I run this three back into the parentheses, I'm back where I have three times x squared is x squared, three times eight x is 24 x, and three times 12 is 36. So I just pulled out that 3 out front. Now this looks just like the ones that we've been doing. So what two numbers multiply to give me 12 and add up to give me 8? And so it's going to look something like this, the 6 and the 2. And of course that, that, that 3 just sits there out front. And a problem, this is more like a problem that we'll do in class, solving problems with factoring. So I start there. I'm trying to get everything on one side and I want 0 on the other side. So I move. I want these two pieces, the 4x and the 20, to come over here. So I subtract 4x from both sides, and I subtract 20 from both sides, so now that side is equal to 0. 4x minus 4x, 20 minus 20, it's gone. So on the right-hand side, all I have is 0. On the left-hand side, 10x minus 4x is 6x, and minus 36 minus 20 gives me negative 56. Okay, I see that I have got, I've got this 2 out front of the x squared, but 2 can go into the 6 and the 56, so I pull it out front. Pull the 2 out. I have x squared plus 36 minus 28 now. Now I have two products. I have this thing being multiplied by this thing getting 0. So one of these things has to be equal to 0. I know the 2 is not equal to 0, so I can sort of forget about that for now. I still have it out there, but again, so all I did was factor that. I got two numbers that multiply to give me negative 28 and add up to give me positive 3. It's 7 and negative 4. And I have three products multiply together to give me 0. One of them must be equal to 0. I know it's not the 2. So either the x plus 7 is equal to 0. If x plus 7 equals 0, then x equals negative 7. If it's the x minus 4 that's equal to 0, then x is equal to 4. This is where I need us to be. And I, if you're not here right away, we'll get you there in a few weeks. So solve this one by factoring. Two numbers that multiply to give me this one and add up to give me this one. It's negative 3 and negative 3. So x minus 3 must be equal to 0, so x is equal to 3. x squared plus 10x equals 5x plus, again, I need everything on one side, I need 0 on the other. So I subtract 5x from both sides, and I get x squared plus 5x equals 36. Now I move to 36. I could have done it all in one step like I did up here. So I get x squared plus 5x minus 36 equals 0. Two numbers multiply together to give me negative 36 and add up to give me a positive 5. It's a 9 and a negative 4. So I now have a product. These two things multiply together give me 0. So one of them must be equal to 0. So either x plus 9 is equal to 0, and if x plus 9 is equal to 0, then x is equal to negative 9. If it's the x minus 4 that's equal to 0, then x must be equal to positive 4. All right, so that's the algebra review. We did some of that in class today or yesterday. Maybe it was yesterday for you. The geometry stuff. What does it mean for something to be congruent? With numbers, we say they're equal. With shapes and angles, we say they're congruent. It just means that they're equal. Two segments that have the same length. 
they have the same length, they're equal to each other. So here's my PQ, segment PQ, here's segment RS. In geometry class, you can't ever say they look like they're the same, so they must be congruent. That's what these little marks tell you. That's got one mark, that's got one mark, these must be congruent. And how do we write that? Segment PQ is congruent to segment SR. This little equal sign with, with the squiggly means congruent. Tick mark, what the tick mark is these little marks up here. They are used on a figure to indicate, indicate, indicate congruent segments. So you can't ever just look at two segments and say, you know what, those look like the same size, so they must be. They must have, they must tell you in some way. That's got one tick mark, that's got one tick mark, these must be the same no matter how they look. So they are marks used on a figure to indicate congruent segments. Right. Between, what does it mean to be between? It sounds pretty obvious. I'll slide this over as need be. Given three points, A, B, and C. B is between, if you need to pause, pause. B is between A and C if and only if. I'll pause there for a little bit, slide back slowly. All three of the points lie on the same line. And A, B plus B, C equals A, C. Kind of a mouthful. What does that mean? So if, let me see, B is between A and C. So let's say from here to San Antonio is a straight line through San Marcos. So if I know how far it is from Austin to San Marcos, and I know how far it is from San Marcos to San Antonio, then I can add those two up and it tells me how far it is from Austin to San Antonio. Again, assuming they're in a straight line. Bisects. What does it mean to bisect? It means to divide into two congruent parts. Bisect. It cuts something into two equal pieces. So for example, if I've got an angle, the big angle LJM, this ray, we should know what a ray is now, ray JK, bisects angle LJM. So on my picture, I got ray JK bisects angle LJM. We'll talk more about angles. To bisect, this means to cut into two equal pieces. Midpoint is the point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. And what does that look like? How do I know a midpoint? Again, I've got segment AC, B is right there. Again, you can't ever say just because it looks like it's in the middle, it must be the middle. Because these two tick marks are here, I know AB must be congruent to BC, therefore B must be in the middle. B must be the midpoint. Segment addition posture, this is kind of like my example about San Antonio to San Marcos. If point B is on AC, and between points A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. Again, Austin to San Antonio through San Marcos, if that's a straight line. This is how far it is from Austin to San Marcos. This is how far it is from San Marcos to San Antonio. If I add those two up, it must be equal to how far it is from Austin to San Antonio. All right, so this is where geometry and algebra meet. This is why I needed you to be good at algebra, because the algebra is coming in. So S is between R and T. So I draw a picture. There's S. There's R and T. It's just somewhere in the middle between R and T. RS is equal to 2X plus 7. So RS from R to S is 2X plus 7. It then says RT is 4X. So RT all the way across, RT is 4X. And ST is 28. So from S to T is 28. It then wants to know, find RT. It's always good to draw a picture. So now I can look at this picture and say, okay, if I add up how far it is from R to S, and add up how far it is from S to T, it should be equal to the whole thing. And I know what the whole thing is, it's 4x. So I can take 2x plus 7, how far it is from Rs, plus 28, which is how far it is from S to T. And that must be equal to the whole thing, which they've told us is 4x. And again, now it's the Algebra 1 problem. I need to be able to solve this. I combine 7 and 28 and you get 35. 
I subtract 2x from both sides, I get 35 is equal to 2x. I divide and I get x is equal to 35 over 2. Leave it as a fraction. Fractions are better than decimals. If you stop here, which a lot of us are tempted to do, we, we solve for x, we must be done. That's not going to be good enough. It didn't just say solve for x. It said find rt. But I know what x is now, and I know from this that rt is equal to 4 times x. So rt is equal to 4 times x. But again, I know what x is now. It's 35 over 2. So 4 times 35 over 2, RT is equal to 70. Okay, let's do another one. Again, we're going to do a lot of practice on these in class 2. B is the midpoint of AC. Okay, so I come in here, I draw the picture. There's A, there's C, B is in the middle. It's the midpoint. AB is equal to 5X, so that's 5X. BC is equal to 3X plus 4, so this must be 3X plus 4. It says find the lengths of A, B, B, C, and A, C. So if B is the midpoint, then what must be true about A, B, and B, C? They must be the same. So I should be able to say that 5x is equal to 3x plus 4, which is what I did. Then that's an algebra 1 problem, and I must solve it. I go through my steps, and I get that x is equal to 2. Again, you cannot stop here. It did not tell you to solve for x. It told you to find a, b, b, c, and a, c. But I did have to find x first. I go back up here. Okay, what is a, b? Tells me a, b is equal to 5 times x. a, b equals 5 times x, but I know that x is equal to 2. So a, b is equal to 10. Now, this is a good check. It's possible we messed up our algebra somewhere over here. Because a, b, and b, c should be the same. We should know that already. And if we messed up our algebra over here, it'll, it'll show over here. So let's make sure we did our algebra correct. BC tells us is equal to 3x plus 4. So BC is equal to 3x plus 4, which equals to 3 times 2 plus 4, which does equal to 10. Now I'm 100% certain that I'm right, because these should have been the same. And of course, AC, the all the way across, must be 20. Last one. D is between E and F. So again, I drew my picture. There's D, and it is between E and F. DE is equal to 3x minus 5. The E equals 3x minus 5. EF all the way across is 6x minus 10. And DF is equal to 2x plus 2. DF equals 2x plus 2. Then it says, is D the midpoint? And it says, why or why not? You must answer that in a sentence. Why or why not? Is D the midpoint? Yes or no. If it is, explain why. If it's not, explain why. Well, if it is the midpoint, then these two need to be the same. So we need to prove or disprove that these two are either the same or not the same. But we do know is if I add this one plus this one, it should be equal to the whole thing. So 3x minus 5 plus 2x plus 2 equals 6x minus 10. Again, that comes from the segment addition postulate up above. If I know how far it is from Austin to San Marcos, San Marcos to San Antonio, I should be able to add those two up and give me the distance to the whole thing. Okay. So now I do some algebra. I simplify over here. 3x plus 2x minus 5 plus 2. I get here. Subtract 5x from both sides. Add 10 to both sides. I get x is equal to 7. So now i got to figure out, okay, if x is 7, how long is ED? Well, it tells me up here, well, DE is 3x minus 5. And if x is equal to 7, 3 times 7 minus 5 is equal to 16. So ED, or DE, doesn't matter, is equal to 16. Okay, how long is df? It tells me df is 2x plus 2. And again, I, did, I know what x is now. It's 7. So I plug it in. I get 2 times 7 plus 2. It's equal to 16. And the whole thing, of course, is equal to 32. So I just showed that, yes, d is the midpoint. Why do I know that? And again, it asks me right here, why? Yes, because ed is congruent to df. That's all you needed to say. But that question needed to be answered. Again, just solving for x is not going to be good enough. It asks you to explain why or why not.